Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Bengals Realistic Rebuild. Today, we're going to have games against the 49ers and the Raiders. You'd expect these games to probably be fairly simple games, considering they're not, well, they're not two of the best teams in the league, so you would expect us to do fairly well against them. But, I mean, you never know what can happen in the NFL, sort of any day, anything can happen, and I can imagine that since they're some of the lesser teams in the league, and the Bengals aren't exactly known as one of the better teams. It'll really be a dogfight and they'll really want to get a win against us. So they'll be pumped. Hopefully we can get something going against them. But we do have a few upgrades to do. As you saw, we had Joe Mixon and Carl Lawson there. And also Sean Williams with an upgrade. I think we have a few more first team upgrades. Parrish Barton is flying up the ratings. Already up to an 80 overall. And we're not even halfway through the season. So he's already gone up two overalls. Hopefully I'm aiming for him to get him around sort of mid 80s towards the end of the year. Just because getting our offensive line better is really going to benefit us. And saying that, Billy Price with an upgrade as well definitely benefits us. He's, he's a scheme fit now, so he's getting a lot more experience as the weeks go on. But something I do want to ask you guys, if you know anything about this, I don't know if anyone does. I can't actually re-sign some of the players because our finances are so bad. Um, I know we were away last week, but if you look at that, we, we lost about 14 million on the week, so... I don't know if there's a way you can sort of get more finances, get them coming in more effectively. Just besides playing the game, I don't know if Madden's actually implemented anything to sort of make it so you can get more more funds available. It's just, I do want to sign the players, but at the moment I can't make them offers until we've had sort of a few home games and we get the money in that way. We'll be able to do it then, but I'd rather get them locked up a bit earlier than that. But if, if you, you guys know anything about that, as I said, do let me know down in the comments how to improve on that maybe sort of some merchandise pricing or something like that don't know how it works personally i've never explored this side of it because i'm always a coach never an owner in um in these sort of in rebuilds and things but this is sort of what the team looks like on the background considering we are i think four and oh at the moment team success obviously very good but everything else is very small bit unfortunately but this is what the team will look like going into today's games. It's looking pretty good. First game against the 49ers after a bye week. So we're rested, ready to go. We're going to start Jordan Willis this week over Carlos Dunlap. Just because I want to sort of get them rotate, rotating a little bit. Get a bit of XP for Lewis as he takes over Dunlap's role. But let's see sort of what the 49ers overall is. I guess we're going to be better. We are by a little. Oh, it's exactly even. So let's jump into the game. This is Madden 19. I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. On tap, we've got what should be a fairly intriguing matchup between the San Francisco 49ers and the Cincinnati Bengals. With that, let's get up to Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. For the call, we bring in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden, Charles Davis. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at Paul Brown. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the San Francisco 49ers and the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gunn. To my left, Charles Davis. And Charles, you focus on this Bengal team entering play. It's so we're going to start out on defense here. Going against the 49ers, obviously they have Jimmy G at quarterback. Very, very good quarterback. Great game manager, but first play of the game, we actually get a, sum, a fumble sack. A sumble, I was going to call it then. Fumble sack, and we do get them to second and 26. Great start to the game. Team's going to be pumped and ready to go. But also in the same vein, it could make Jimmy G, you know, a bit angry. Make him want to play so much better against us, because we are going to keep sending pressure if he can't handle it. So we get into third and 15. Something we do have to look out for is George Kittle. Very, very good tight end. Sort of had a breakout year and that wasn't to him but that was a great throw William Jackson actually went to dive to deflect the, the pass rather than go for the tackle and it does end up costing us we give up an 80 yard touchdown after getting a fumble sack on the first play so that was a very unfortunate start for us but we do have second possession here we didn't get a score but we did manage to sort of keep them or well, they managed to keep us out of the end zone and we managed to pump the ball up to their two yard line so we do have a chance here to get safety or something if we can get some pressure on them. We're covering over the middle. Unfortunately, they do get a little bit free. We don't get any pressure in. And Jimmy G is two for two on passes today. They're getting the run game going a little bit. So we make sure 
we're going to contain that. We'll get people on the outside, like the individual there, containing the run. Make sure they can't get anything going. I gamble on the play action there. I swear it was going to be a run, and unfortunately it wasn't. Great crossing route over the middle, and Jimmy G is already up to over 100 yards on the day. Not even five minutes in the game. Obviously that 80 yard pass has a lot to do with it, but he's getting some big gains against us. A lot of big gains over the middle. I need to sort of lock up over the middle a little bit, which is what I'll be, we'll be trying to do. He does have someone a bit open there, but we nearly back the ball down and we very nearly catch that and we would have been gone. That would have been seven points for the team. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to do that. And once again, since they're doing so much play action, I don't really want to gamble on the run as much now because pretty much most of the plays, they're either running it or doing a play action. And I don't want to sort of give them that opportunity. We do get a very nice sack there, which was huge. That is Willis coming in, proving that it was worthwhile starting him in the game over Dunlap. He's already made a big impact. They can't really contain him on the edge. He's always making moves, but wide open over the middle again. Our middle linebackers just cannot get things going today, and our safeties need to play a little bit more aggressive on those. So we're going to bring them down into the box a little bit more, hopefully cover everything over the middle. And I thought... He was out of bounds there, and it looks like he's actually been given out of bounds, which is perfect. That'll keep them to a field goal, and that's good for us. But they do challenge it, and unfortunately, the ruling was overturned, and they say he stayed in bounds. Didn't look in bounds to me, but I mean, what can you do? It must have been in bounds. I mean, I didn't want to find a replay of it, because if it wasn't in bounds, would have just sort of ruined the mojo of the game, I think. Would have ruined my mojo anyway. So they go up 14 to nothing against us. And once again, we cannot score. Our offense is being stopped by the 49ers defense. They have a decent um, defense, to be fair. Their defensive line's quite good, which is probably why they're stopping us quite well. Because we do rely on Joe Mixon a lot. Big play from, uh, from our cornerback there. Nearly ends up getting the pick. But once again, we need to cover over the middle. We've got to watch George Kittle. And he is absolutely wide open over the middle there. I think that was George Kittle anyway. Very unfortunate for us that we cannot stop that. We just need to... I think I'm... I was thinking about just making three people cover the middle the entire game. Sort of going cover two. And just making sure they can't get anything over the middle. But... I didn't want to gamble on that. I keep wanting to send in pressure because we are getting a few sacks when we send pressure. Obviously, the left-hand side probably going to be quite open on this play, depending on how it works out. They do have three guys over there, and we end up missing the tackle on the deep ball, and they take a 21 to nothing lead. So the 4-0 Bengals are bottling it right now. We're giving up a lot of big plays, but we do manage to score on offense, which was huge. So we're not going to go into halftime with no points on the board. We're just going to try and lock up the run. We go for a tackle there, miss it. He's bounced. I think that's Matt Breeder. He's bouncing off us like nothing. And we do fortunately bring him down after the third or fourth tackle there. Third and three, though. They do manage to, well, get a huge gain here. That's George Kittle again. We just cannot handle over the middle balls today. But we also... Whenever they go outside, they're getting huge gains. So it's a very difficult one. And I think the only way to counteract that, we man people up. Or we send a lot of pressure. And manning people up, we're keeping them to short gains, which is okay. I just don't want to give up that 80-yard, 60-yard touchdown again, which has happened twice this game already. I don't think we've given up any of them all year. And fortunately, we get a bat down there. We bat the ball down to Mark Barron, and he's got nothing but green grass ahead of him. I think that is Marquis Goodwin chasing him down. If anyone can get him, it is Marquis Goodwin, but he can't. And Mark Barron... We really needed that. Gets a pick six off a tipped ball. That was a phenomenal play by him. And they rightfully celebrate. We're back in the game. It was 21 to nothing. Now it's 21 to 14. We really needed that before the half. Otherwise, we'd have to rely on the CPU defense to keep the 49ers out. And the 49ers, the way they're playing, they are playing very well offensively. Except they're either sort of going... It's literally 100 or nothing with them at the moment. They're either getting insane touchdowns or getting sacked, fumbling the ball and throwing picks exactly like that. But they do still have a chance before the half to get more points on the board because we got that pick six. And defensively, we just cannot... They're getting completions free will, to be honest. I think he was 14 of 18 at this point. And so that shows completion percentage. It is working out massively because I think two of them... I think it's done two picks today, or one pick. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe only one pick. But we do get a stop on defense there, and I tried to jump in as soon as the half started. Unfortunately, I couldn't, and we scored instantly, and the 49ers um, ended up punting the ball to us. So now we're starting an offense. We are 21 to 21 at this point. So we're back in the game after a horrendous start. We took a while to get going. 
but hopefully we can make some of those half-time Patriots adjustments and get something going here. Very nearly gets sacked for a safety there, but fortunately, Dwayne Haskins sees that, just dumps the ball over gently to Tyler Eifert, and he picks up the nice game there. So we're going to try and scramble a lot more this game, I think, because Dwayne Haskins, I know he's that dual-threat QB. His throw-in has been a little bit off, so if we can get his confidence up a little bit, get him scrambling with the ball, nearly get a pass to Tyler Eifert there. If he jumped for it, it would have potentially been in range for him getting, a, getting on the end of that, but he didn't for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why, but yeah, Dwayne Haskins, we need to jump forward or not throw passes like that. That was a terrible read by me um, over the middle there. They did jump that. Fortunately, they didn't pick it, so we're going to punt the ball all the way down the field to the 10-yard, and it's going to bounce pretty much perfectly to the 5-yard line there. So hopefully our defense can get something going, and they do get a stop pretty quickly, I think, because we get up to the 45-yard line, so they must have just punted it pretty much from their end zone. Hopefully, we can get Joe Mixon going here, but the 49ers really are locking up the run well against us today. A bit unfortunate considering that is what we rely on. Dwayne Haskins here takes a big sack. That was a big hit from Jennings in there, taking us to a third and 18. So this game isn't as easy as some of the other games we've had. A bit unfortunate. I did think the 49ers were going to be one of the easier ones. Nice clean pocket there. Unfortunately, we throw a pick. And that is exactly what we didn't want to do. But luckily, they get a flag for an illegal block in the back. So they don't manage. Actually, they do manage to score off that. Making it 28 to 21. So once again, offensively, we need to get going. It's the third quarter. We do still have a fair amount of time to score. So it's nothing. We don't have to rush passes. We'll just we'll roll out when we can. Get Dwayne Haskins. Get in a huge game there. 25-yard run. But something... I don't want to take any huge risks. Because it's just not working today. We're going to pick up a nice block there. Dwayne Haskins will pick up... Nearly pick up the first down there. Actually, only getting seven yards on that. But second and three... I know I'm not running the ball very often. Well, it looks like I'm not running the ball very often, but I've just chose to leave out some of the runs because they are on Joe Mixon, like, instantly. As you can see there, we dump it off to him. Hopefully, or well, hope he can do something after the catch. He can't. So, I think this game is going to be one of Joe Mixon's, one to forget for him. But over the middle, we did have someone wide open there. I didn't go for it. I'm going to launch it deep. Three on one. And we actually somehow come down with it. So, John Ross... He literally only scores insane touchdowns. That was undeserved. Entirely undeserved. But it was a great throw from Haskins there. With someone right in his face. The stadium deservedly celebrates in there. That is a phenomenal touchdown to see. As you can see the height he got on that. And John Ross just standing at the back of the end zone. He was there way before anyone else. Comes down with probably the touchdown of the season so far there. Look at that. Gets just in bounds. But that gives us a 28-28 game. And we have the ball back because the 49ers don't manage to score on their next possession. So Joe Mixon, we're going to try and run the ball a little bit more on this one, I think. Just because I can imagine, since we're passing it so often, they're probably going to gamble a bit on the pass now. So we'll switch it up, go to the run, and hopefully get things going there. So just as I say that, we do, are going to not just solely run the ball. We're going to pass where we can. But Dwayne Haskins, very lucky he didn't fumble it there. He does manage to just about pick up a first down. But then he gets sacked on the next play to second and 12. So, very, very close game this one. It's, it, there's a lot of plays. There's a lot happening. We do get um, nearly sacked there back. That would have been minus 20 yards or something. Fortunately, we managed to just about get the, uh, get the ball out. Um, but it does give us to third and 12. So, luckily for us, we have Tyler Eifert who's such a big body guy. If we're throwing to it over the middle, he's one-on-one. -on -one. He's probably going to come down with it more times than not. So Dwayne Haskins, once again, very risky pass there, and they do end up picking it again. I know I didn't need to force that. I could have just probably... Well, it was sort of... I think it was third and 12, so worst case, it would have been a punt sort of style throw. And very lucky for us, they don't score on the turnover. So we are going to get it just into their half. There is time to get sort of in field goal range. That's probably what we're going to have to accept now. Over the middle, wide open. Very lucky for us we shrug off the defensive lineman there. And we're going to try and truck some people Haskins because he's not fumbling today. I know he has case. He, he likes to fumble quite a lot. But since he wasn't fumbling today, we were going to give him the opportunity there. And we're going to hopefully get into field goal range here. Joe Mixon shrugging off two tackles down to the five-yard line. 
Gonna call hurry up just because I want to score. Make the game a little bit more exciting. I don't want to end it on a on a field goal, really. I'd rather not. I'd rather get at least one more touchdown in just to keep our streak going. And for some reason, the game wouldn't let me throw the ball there. It did this weird glitch where, as you can see, Dwayne Haskins was just sort of running on the spot. Wouldn't do anything. Wouldn't throw the ball. Wouldn't move. And that gives us second and goal at the 12 when we were at the 5. Which is a huge difference. We're going to have to get... I know over the middle was open there. I thought Tyler Eifert might be able to come down with that. Just because he's such a good tight end. Unfortunately, he can't. We're going to actually end up shanking the field goal. And that gives the 49ers a chance to go down the field and score. But fortunately, they don't. So we are still in the game. 28-28. Our first offensive possession in overtime. I just want to get something going here. Dwayne Haskins is his first overtime ever, I think. We did have someone just about open there. But we couldn't get the release quick enough. And we end up getting sacked. So second and 20. I just want to pick up a bit of yards because I can imagine if we're going to punt it, we uh, we'll get it. Well, I imagine we were going to punt it. We could have got a little bit more distance on it. Fortunately, Joe Mixon picks up a huge first down there, and since it worked so well last time, we're going to go back to the stretch play. Get another first down there, I think. Maybe second than inches. No, it was a first down. So we're going to go for a big play here. Hopefully, someone will be open, and triangle could have got open eventually, but fortunately for us. I think that's John Ross was open. Could have got the field goal there to win it. Or to, to give us a chance to win it if we stopped them on defence. But I just don't trust our defence to stop them. Saying that, our defence did actually manage to stop them. So taking a field goal there would have been the smart decision. Going to go deep on this play. Nothing comes of it. I was hoping John Ross could pull some magic out here. Going to go with a run on third and 12, I think. Potentially, as you know, we're going to go for a pass this time. Just to get, and we do just about get the first down there. Tyler Eifert once again coming up with so many clutch third downs. And I'm regretting my decision to not just kick the field goal at this point. But a few people are open. There's a huge throw there. And once again, John Ross coming down with a huge catch. Bring us to the four yard line. We got frozen on the kick, but we are going to make the kick and end the game there with the win. Very close game. Dwayne Haskins had a decent game in there. The two picks were entirely my fault. Joe Mixon with another good uh, good game in there. Also, Dwayne Haskins getting a lot of rushing yards in as well. But Joe Mixon keeping up his streak of 100-yard games. Tyler Boyd, AJ Green, John Ross. John Ross both only made two catches in the game, but both were huge. And defensively, we had a good game as well, getting three sacks and a pick in there from Mark Barron. Mark Barron doing pretty much everything that game. He got a lot of tackles, a lot of picks... And a sack. So let's jump through to next week and see how we do against the Raiders. So after a very successful week last week. Well not insanely successful actually. Just successful enough. We go against the Raiders this week. We are still undefeated in the league. But we are getting very close in games at the moment. If sort of if the coin flip just went a different way. Or maybe two or three of the games. We'd be two and three at the moment. So I am definitely going to enjoy our winning streak but at the same time not going to take it for granted because I know it's definitely not sort of given to us that we're going to get wins at this point we do have a, a lot of very very close games under our belt but a few upgrades again Terrell Lewis our rookie outside backer he's looking decent as I said physically unbelievable technically still a lot of room to improve but since we have a little bit more money this week I might look to re-sign some people but I'll probably leave that to next week, actually. So let's jump into the game against the Raiders. We are higher overall. Hopefully, we can beat them. Mixing, fixing for another big game. I'm Jonathan Coachman. This is Madden 19 on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see running back Joe Mixon coming off a 100-yard performance a week ago as it'll be the Oakland Raiders taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half. But it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at Paul Brown Stadium here in Cincinnati, Ohio. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Oakland Raiders and... So after a very tough game against the 49ers last week, hopefully this game will be a bit more routine considering the Raiders, they're really in rebuild mode at the moment. They probably have a few youngsters in from their first round picks who are going to make an impact, but hopefully they won't. I know I, that was terrible for me running straight into the defender with Joe Mixon there after we got a good block, but 
I mean, it is what it is. We are still going to work our way down the field. Joe Mixon, as per usual, getting taken down by the first guy isn't something he normally does. So we're going to abuse the run this game pretty much as much as possible. And we do sort of stiff arm a guy there and somehow manage to pick up a huge gain. They missed about four tackles on us, all of them expecting us to get down the field a bit quicker than we did. Fortunately, we didn't, and we go to the 16-yard line. And we're going to attempt our first throw of the day. And would you believe it? We throw another pick. I mean, Dwayne Haskins, I know it's my reads, obviously, but he did underthrow that one quite a lot. We were open in the back of the end zone, and you saw the look on the face of our coach there. He was not happy. So... We're going to have to try and work our way back into this game a little bit. We are going to try and throw the ball a little bit more. Just because we want those big plays. We want those big gainers coming in. And over the middle there, fortunately for us, it's Tyler Boyd. And he will come down with near enough anything we throw his way. He's just such a good receiver. And I really want to re-sign him for next year. Hopefully he will take the contract offer because he's been phenomenal. But Joe Mixon, someone else we are going to rely on as per usual. I don't think we have to re-sign him for a few years, which is good. Because he will he's a staple part of our offense at this point. Because when Dwayne Haskins can't get things going, which does happen a fair amount, we really rely on Mixon. As you've seen, we've got a lot of games with him at over 100 yards. So coming up to... Um, the end of the first quarter here. Still nil-nil. No one scored yet. Offensively, we've been in the red zone once. We just uh, we threw a pick, which was a bit unfortunate. Wide open over the middle there. Great throw on the run. Tyler Boyd bounces off a tackle. Great block there from, I think it was, John Ross. And that gives us the touchdown. And we also got the, uh, the objective there to not throw a pick, which for Dwayne Haskins is quite rare. So, um, yeah, we got a nice touchdown there, Tyler Boyd. Great block from um, from John Ross, and that's how we're doing it so far. Over the middle, once again, Tyler Boyd is having a game. And he's the guy today who can't be tackled. It's not Joe Mixon. Today it's Tyler Boyd. Huge field goal here. I think it was a 48, and we actually end up shanking it just to the left. Not the left, the right. Unfortunate for us, our kicker is having a bit of a, a strange year. I've really turned down on the sliders, the accuracy, so it's not a given every time. Because so I think that sort of takes the uh, the realism out of it. Because you can make every field goal in this, to be honest. So I've turned down the uh, the accuracy a little bit, so we're not giving it every time. I was going to scramble there. Fortunately, I didn't, because we come up with yet another huge Tyler Boyd catch. Giving us a first down, way down the field. But it's a low-scoring first half. I mean, their offense can't get anything going, which is very fortunate for us. And to be honest, our offense hasn't got much going, except Joe Mixon. Gets to the outside, good block from AJ Green in there, and as soon as I say we can't get anything going, we're gone. Joe Mixon gets into the end zone, dead fishes right into the end zone, and we'll take the touchdown, putting us up 14-0 in the game. Hopefully the Raiders can't score on their next possession, and they can't, and we do still have time to score again. Once again, Joe Mixon, I was going to try and juke there, but we took a huge hit. I think that was Carl Joseph in there coming in and absolutely laying the lumber on Joe Mixon. He's... That probably would have resulted in an injury if I had injuries on, to be honest. But we're going to try well, we're going to try and scramble. I did see a few guys open. Fortunately, we do get the pass off. And AJ Green's nearly gone there. I think that was Gary Conley coming up with the tackle. Might have even been Carl Joseph, but one of those guys coming up with a tackle there to prevent the touchdown. John Ross, that speed gets him to the outside on the uh, the sweet play. And the sort of the play the, the, uh, the Chiefs use a lot with Tyreek Hill. It works just as well with John Ross in this. So, second and goal. Going to fake the run. And there's so much space on the right-hand side. It makes sense to run it. Joe Mixon was keeping the defender busy. And we'll get Dwayne Haskins' first rushing touchdown of his career. Hopefully many to come. And we do actually still have 30 seconds in the second half to score here. So, the game's gone from nothing to something really quickly. But we do take a sack. So, that will give us the end of the first half. Unless we can get one big play in here. John Ross with a sweet play again. Hopefully they don't see it coming. We do get some nice blocks to the outside. We need one or two jukes. We can't get anything going there. So that will take us into the half. And now we're on defence. So we did get the ball. Our offence scored. Making it 28 to nothing. This looks like it might be potential for a shutout game here. Because Derek Carr. I mean when his players are giving up on him like that. He's already thrown two picks and only 83 yards. So we're going to send a lot of pressure in this game. A lot of our guys should be coming in. Fortunately, we break that up there, giving us the ball back on offense. And we score again. Our offense in the sim 
either scores every single drive or never scores. It's, it's literally one way or the other. It's, it's so strange, but our defence does very well on the sim. We nearly get the pick there. For, unfortunately, um, I think that's Jared Cook got position on us to, to ca come down with the ball, but... As per usual, man blitz, send a lot of pressure. Hopefully we can get something going. They did actually um, get Noah Fant in, which is big for them. But when you got someone, I mean, Sean Williams came in like a rocket there. He didn't fall for the play action whatsoever. Great sack from him. And everyone is getting on the sack board today just because we're mixing up our coverages a lot. Sending random people, manning up different people on people that you wouldn't expect them to be manned up on. And once again, huge sack. This time from our rookie, Lewis. I know he's got a few sacks this year, but when you have him on the outside with that speed, he can get round guys so quickly. As you can see, he ran literally probably about 20, 30 yards to make that play, which is phenomenal. Probably could have got a sack over the middle there. It was a huge hole in the offensive line, but we're getting duked out. I think that's Jordy Nelson who was just duking us out there. Um, I couldn't actually see there, but whoever that was, Duke two of our players out. We were lucky to manage to get the tackle in the end. Otherwise, that would have been a very nice touchdown for the Raiders. But they're, they're really duking us pretty well. Um, we are through to the fourth quarter, and we are up 42 to nothing, though. Didn't even realise we scored again. We're just scoring so quickly on offence. But another sack, this time from Billings, who seems to come up with at least a sack a game lately. So... He's a good pickup. If you can manage to pick him up in your franchise, also Billings is good. He's quite young. Great juke from John Ross there to start off this return. Unfortunately, we couldn't get to the outside, but that would have been phenomenal if we managed to do that. Very quick little stutter step juke. The other guy's ankles are broken 100%, and we are back on defense. Unfortunately, we couldn't score from that, which you would have, wouldn't have expected. But once again, what you would expect is a sack, and that is from my man, Mark Barron, who has been a huge acquisition for the team so since we've been sending so much pressure i'm going to drop people off this time i'm guessing they wouldn't expect it they do have a few people open but they don't look to the left hand side where they were open and we end up getting the pick with jesse bates in there who was the spy i knew Derek carr wasn't probably going to roll out but if he did jesse bates would be able to handle that easily and we end up getting a 45 to nothing lead at this point it's been a domination Jesse Bates laying the lumber again. They do come down with the uh, with the pass there. Not sure how he managed to hold on to that. That was a absolutely huge hit from Jesse Bates in there. But I, I do want to keep a shout-out going here. And they are on our 48. So we do still have a chance of getting a shout-out. First and 10 on our 42. Not exactly sure how that happened. They must have been on their 48. But we're going to send a lot of pressure again. Hopefully they can't get anyone open quick. They do, though, unfortunately. And they are down to our, I think, 20-yard line-ish. 23-yard line. So I'm going to hopefully get a pick or a fumble here so they don't manage to get the field goal or the uh, or the touchdown. But our player there just absolutely flopped and we end up giving the touchdown up. So it was a bit unfortunate there to end the game on that. But we do end up winning the game. Huge margin. I think it was 45-7. to 7. Dwayne Haskins, a decent day there. A lot of yards, great completion percentage. One touchdown to one terrible pick thrown by me, obviously. Um, besides that pick... He played very, very well today. Joe Mixon doing well. John Ross with two nice um, nice rushes, rushes there as well. But Joe Mixon, all, once again, leading the team. AJ Green and Tyler Boyd, both over 100-yard games. Tyler Boyd also with a touchdown, as did the Tyler Eifert. So Team Tyler coming in big yet again. Um, defensively, quite a lot of sacks. One and a half from Sean Williams and Billings. Mark Barron coming in there. Two picks from Darquise Denard, who's... Becoming a very good staple of this defence. He's very good in the nickel corner spot. And also we had another pick from someone else. But that'll be the end of today's episode. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. But I'll see you soon for episode 5.